Not very often on Hockey Night in Canada for the late game do you get a finish before 11 o'clock, but that is indeed the case tonight. The Oilers bringing home a 4-2 victory over top of the Vancouver Canucks, ending the Bruce Boudreau era more than likely according to everything we've read this weekend. Friends, this is Dolany TV and welcome back to another post-game edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel. My great pleasure to have you along tonight as we recap the Oilers 4-2 victory over top of the Canucks. But before we get to that, if you're new to the channel, what I want to make mention of, the housekeeping notes. If you'd be so kind to consider hitting that subscribe button here on the channel, I'd really appreciate that as that would be a great way to finish up tonight by maybe adding a couple new viewers to our crazy bunch of Oilers fans we've combined here of over 10,000 on Dolany TV all right so the Oilers win 4-2 you see here on the graphic the shots were 29 apiece Stuart Skinner again limits an opponent to less than three goals against that being two tonight the Oilers continue to reduce their goals against average the Oilers continue to up their save team save percentage and continue to get good overall goaltending. It's a big thing for this Oilers team that has been much needed and the win streak improves to six games in a row. You thought I wasn't going to mention that in the first two minutes? Come on! But the big thing is here, friends, and I'm going to make sure you aren't going to be able to see it too well. Let me see if I can uh, get it going. You can kind of make that out. There you go. Biosteel, you saw this on the community tab or over on Twitter earlier today because, yes, I'm trying to Somehow force Biosteel's hands, maybe into sending me merch, maybe into sending me free Biosteel, something, someday, anything for uh, being a guy on YouTube promoting their products because I believe in them. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, the, the important part with this is prior to tonight's game in 2023, when I drink Biosteel on game day, the Oilers were 6-0-0. That's the New York Islanders game, the last five. And tonight, the kicker, Made the extra point, unlike that Dallas Cowboys game last weekend. And guess what? We are 7-0 on this streak. A full-on touchdown at this point. How beautiful is that for us Oilers fans? All right, the housekeeping notes, they're up and over with. So let's get over to it. The Oilers game recap. Get the goal scorers, get the stats, get everything I thought about this one up and fleshed out. I think another solid game. The Oilers at times were very loose. I don't mean that defensively, offensively, neutralized. I mean that just in an overall game. They were very loose at times, and it did cost them a couple times, and obviously that shows up defensively, but I think too offensively they were a bit loose, maybe guilty of overpassing, overthinking, overcomplicating, whatever the word you want to use to describe what they did to kind of create some chances against themselves in the long run short of this game. So the other side of this story is Connor McDavid has scored his 40th goal of the season. That's a huge time get for us Oilers fans. Connor McDavid is going to score 50 this year. Zach Hyman then follows it up with a power play goal from Connor McDavid and Ryan Nugent Hopkins on a two-on-one. Still not sure how Nuge made that pass happen, but he did up to McDavid and then two-on-one backdoor tippity tap by Zach Hyman. Done. Oh, by the way, Zach Hyman's stretch pass to Connor McDavid's breakaway 40th goal of the season. That was a thing of beauty as well. And then the Oilers stormed up and took a 3-0 lead here in this game. So yeah, it's a lot tighter than it should have looked for a 3-0 lead halfway through the game. Leon Dreisettle from a nice play. Nugent Hopkins again starting. Zach Hyman following. And then Leon Dreisettle hammering home a goal against Spencer Martin. And the Oilers were able to take home Leon Dreisettle's 28th goal of the season. A 3-0 lead. Hyman's third point of the game. Nuge's 35th assist of the season, and a 3 0 lead is the big part there. Then all of a sudden, Andres Kuzmenko, he, uh, he takes home a very easy goal, breakaway, solid look. He's got 19 on the season, so that's not a guy you usually want to leave in front of Stuart Skinner, and just one of those matchups that he takes home the better off of it. And Elias Pettersson with a beautiful pass to break down the Oilers' coverage defensively. I mean, Evan Bouchard was still at center ice once Kuzmenko picked up the puck, so it is what it is. And I mean, how nice would this guy have been to have in our lineup? But he ultimately chose Vancouver, and it just ends up being what it is at the end of the day. JT Miller, though, 
He scores his 18th goal of the season with 3.26 to go in or into, sorry, the third period. Like I said on stream, I am cooked. It has been a long day. I am very tired. It's 11 o'clock now. Let's go to sleep. Um, Quinn Hughes, Connor Garland pick up the assists. I mean, this was just a hammer job by JT Miller. He absolutely smashed this one home. And then Ryan Nugent Hopkins gets the empty netter from Zach Hyman, who also scored another goal this game. However, debate it, and it will be debated very heavily tonight. The goalie interference goal, the coach's challenge for Bruce Fudrow, the Bruce, there it is, chance. The theatrics in this one, right, kind of involved from an Oilers fan perspective to get Bruce Boudreaux a good send-off in Vancouver by the NHL, right? It's tough, but at the end of the day, didn't cost the Oilers. They clamped down. They killed off a penalty. They were solid enough defensively to win and were winning one-goal games and scoring the empty netter more often than not over the past six games or else blowing out our opponents and absolutely taking care of business. So that's the absolutely fantastic part here for the Oilers. A six-game win streak. Suddenly you improve to an unreal record. Let me just get you that record. In fact, um, let me go here. I don't know if it's uh, updated. 26, 18, and 3. I imagine that is 27, 18, and 3 now if uh, Patrick hasn't updated things as of yet but as it sits right now for the Oilers oh yeah there it is there it is the old uh more likes coming in on the bio steel stuff um you love to see it but for things going here friends the Oilers get the big result unfortunately though I think for Canucks fans Bruce Boudreaux and anyone that has any sense of morals in this situation is it really sucks to see Bruce Boudreaux go out on a losing note, given every piece of flack the Vancouver Canucks organization has thrown his way over the course of this whole debacle that they've had. Jim Rutherford, the Aquilinis, top to bottom management within the organization of the Canucks, outside of the coaching staff, have been an absolute embarrassment on this front with Bruce Boudreaux. And I, I hope only that if a team is to give him another role, that they never put him in that kind of situation ever again. It is absolutely awful to see. And uh, unfortunately, at the end of the day, hockey is a business. I get that. But at the end of the day, you're talking about humans as your commodity. Friends, I'm Tyson. This is Stall in the TV. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Really appreciate you being along for the ride this evening. It's been a long one. The Oilers, though, six games in a row. And we are often to the races. Down the stretch we go. If you're new to the channel though, make sure to do this.